Hi guys, my name is Heather. Welcome back to my channel. I am just coming on super quick today to have a little chat about paper. I have had lots of people ask me questions about like what type of paper do you use to print on and what printer do you have? So I thought I would just make a short video and put it on my channel for anyone who has any questions or if you guys out there have a like a certain paper that you love to print on, I would love it if you would um, drop it in the comments just because I'm curious, like maybe there's something out there that I haven't tried because I have tried a lot of different ones. <laughs> and um, so I've kind of narrowed it down to like I have three favorites. So I'm just gonna go over that today. And obviously you can print on normal, plain copy paper. Anytime you buy printables or, or you know, you're printing at all, obviously you can print on copy paper. And, and every single time I make a digital kit, I always do test prints on regular copy paper to ensure that it will print beautifully no matter what. So I always, always do that. But typically whenever I make a journal, I do use a few specialty papers that I like. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about that today and um, also just let you know what my printer is. So the first paper that I'm gonna talk about is one that I have put in my listings whenever, if you've ever purchased a digital kit from me and you read through the listing, I've told you in the listing that I use this um, Southworth business paper and it's, and it's a linen paper. So it's made by Southworth and the this is the important part because Southworth has a lot of business papers but the finish is linen and I always buy the 24 pound. So um, I'm able to find this paper at my local Walmart amazingly enough and it's significantly less money than whenever I buy it like at Staples or like a like an office supply. So if, if you live in the US, um, you might be able to find this in Walmart or office supplies definitely carry this line of paper. Um, but the best bet, the most um, inexpensive is definitely Amazon. Amazon carries all sorts of different papers and you can order it and have it delivered. Um, if you are not in the US, I'm not exactly sure, you'll have to do a little bit of searching around, but yeah, I love this paper and I use it pretty much all the time. I kind of substitute normal copy paper with this paper unless I really don't want a texture. So I'm going to show you really quickly um, how the texture works on this. So I'm hoping that you will be able to see whenever, whoops, I'm shaking the camera. So yeah, so the if you can see like how it has the little bit of that linen, it's like a crisscross pattern. And um, let's see if you can see it on this one. And it just really gives a really nice texture, especially to papers such as wallpapers or papers that are um, like fabrics, or it just gives that really nice texture. I especially love it for all of my vintage wallpaper printables, and I use it all the time. So let's see, this one might be a good one because it's sort of plain, but I don't know if you can see that texture on there, but it is really, really a beautiful paper. It prints nice, I'm happy with it. It's one of my favorites and I use it all the time. So that is definitely, definitely, I would say my favorite paper. And then um, my next favorite paper for cardstock is this one. I haven't opened this yet, but um, I just bought it. But it's the HP Heavyweight Project Paper. And it is a 40 pound paper and it's made by HP. You can, uh, you can find this on Amazon. Um, I bought this at Staples. It's a little bit expensive but you get 250 sheets and this lasts me forever. So for me, it's like worth it to pay just a little bit more for a paper that I feel like prints nice and it just lasts me a lot longer. But I have tried a lot of different card stocks and this so far is my favorite. So if you have one that you like, that you found that 
works good for you, um, let me know because I'm still like, I really like this one, but um, I'm not sure. Maybe there's one that's better. Now I've tried like different cream colored cardstocks and so far I haven't found one that I love. So <laughs> I didn't want to put it in here because I just haven't found one, but I typically don't even print on cream colors. I just do the white. So yeah, so that is my cardstock that I use. And typically I use that for whenever I'm printing things like this. Like if I want it to be like a card, like a postcard or um, like this here is like I was going to cut these out. This is from one of my digital kits, uh, French blue kit, I think. And this part, you know, it just cuts out really, really nice because it's a cardstock material. So, so yeah, so that's that. And then these are also printed on there and it just gives such a nice, a nice print. I feel like it gives a real sharp image and I'm really, really happy with, with that cardstock. Sometimes the other cardstocks that I've used, they've been so like almost, um, muddy, like whenever you print on them or I'm not sure what the right word is, but I just haven't found one except for this one that is kind of like sharper. So yeah, I really, really like this one. And then the third paper is this one, which is the presentation paper. And it is by Epson and it's a matte presentation paper. And I have an inkjet printer, so um, this is this particular paper is made for inkjet printers although I know there's other brands of presentation paper that you can use if you have um, another type of printer and this one gives you a hundred sheets and it is 27 pounds I know that there's some different variations of this paper so those details you might want to write down if you want to try this out and you can find this on Amazon as well and also staples I've I have purchased it at staples but I will tell you it's significantly higher priced at staples um I think it was like $6.99 on Amazon and it was like $16.99 at staples so it's significantly higher so yeah and again it's a hundred sheets it's a little bit expensive but for me I like you know, I'm not really going to go through this very fast because I don't really use this for everything. I just use this paper for whenever I want something to kind of just like give some color depth and I'm gonna show you some examples here. So yeah, so that is my third paper. And these are the papers that I've used and I'm just gonna show you really quickly how much of a difference there is whenever you compare them side by side. So this one is the presentation paper and this one is regular copy paper. And you should be able to see like the color depth, like it really, um, like it really changes the color. And for some things that works so good, this image in particular, I really, really love how the depth of color just really comes through. The pinks are a lot more striking. Um, this one is a little more faded. So if you want, you know, a more faded sort of vintage look, you might, you might choose this. Um, but I have pretty much printed this image on this paper every time I used it. And in my most recent journal, I used this image and I printed right onto this paper. So, so there's that one. And then all of these images I'm showing you are all from my digital kits. So this is from like the romance, vintage romance kit. These are from a new kit that I just put out, um, a botanical kit. And this here is from the Le Artiste kit. And you can see this, the significant difference in the blue with that presentation paper. Like it's just so pretty on that, on that. It really pops the blues and I mean, I still like it on the copy paper. It's still really pretty, but when you print on that, it's just so, so pretty. So yeah, 
So I definitely would choose that. Now some papers, I'm going to show you an example of a few that I don't really care for. So the yellow papers, the ones, the scripts, the the French ledgers, the different ones that have the yellow backgrounds, it really tends to just yellow that up a lot. And so you can see a big difference in these two papers. And even though this looks really pretty, I prefer this one because I like the pink and it just looks more true. It doesn't, this looks like so vibrant. It's a little bit too vibrant for me. So typically, if I was going to print this image, I would print, um, this is actually printed on the linen paper. So I'm going to see if you can tell that like texture. So that's printed on the linen paper. Sorry if I keep shaking this. I, don't, I have this, my phone hooked up to something that every time I move, it's shaking. <laughs> So yeah, so there's that one. And this one really quickly is another example. This is also from the Lay Artiste kit. And you can see just such a significant difference in the blues. It really warms up the whites. So here it's almost like more of a gray, whereas here it gives a little bit more of a cream. And the blue is just very vivid. So. So yeah, so that presentation paper works really nicely on some things. Um, this is the red. I, this is also Layer Tease Kit. And I, although I really, really like this one, like I love that sort of dark vintage red on here, the, this one is super vibrant and it almost completely changes, changes the image. So depending upon what you would use it for. Like... I might choose, if I were going to use this in, an, in a piece of art, I would probably choose this one because I like that look better, but this is just as pretty and it's just more true red. So it really changes the image by just the paper that you use. So, so yeah, so there's that one. And then this was an example of black. So the black is significantly deeper on the presentation paper versus the um this is the, the linen paper so yeah so you can see a huge difference in the blacks so yeah so those are some examples for there and then last of all i will show you um on photographs so this presentation paper is awesome for photographs so you can see the depth of color and vintage photographs are not crisp and clear. So anytime you're printing any sort of printable that is a vintage image, usually it's a little bit fuzzy, you know, depending on the image. So this is regular copy paper. And while I really, really like that, I still like that. It just kind of gives you a true vintage image look. This is the linen paper, and you can see on this lady, like kind of like the texture here. So this just gives it sort of a texture if you want your paper to be, I mean your photograph to be textured. And then if you want like some depth of color, you can see the difference here. It really changes um, the image. And I really love this presentation paper. And like you could see with these ladies, the black, like this image, where is this image? I have it here. This image here is meant to be really dark up here. That's just how it was taken. And you can see the, the dresses pretty, pretty much, but you can't really see the heads very well. And then you can see on regular copy paper how it just sort of looks more gray. It looks a little bit more faded. And then this one becomes a little bit more of a sepia look. So yeah, it's really interesting how the papers change it. But this one in particular, I really, really like um, just that depth of color for photographs. And you can see where the yellow parts are, how it really starts to pop out those yellows. And sometimes the yellow is too much. So I will say that. 
So sometimes I'm like, oh, I print it out and I'm like, oh no, no, that's way too yellow. So, so yeah, so that is all of the, um, the images that I have to show you for examples. All of these images, like I said, are in my shop. If you like any of them, you can check them out. They're all my printable kits. And um, also, I'm just going to show you really quickly what, what my printer is and what printer I use. So this is my printer. It's the Epson EcoTank um, ET4700. And you can kind of see here where the um, ink tanks are. That is how you measure the level of the ink that's in the printer. And it is really, really nice because it holds a lot of ink. Like the ink bottles are very, very large. So yeah, so that is my printer. And um, I'll show you real quick the ink bottles for that printer. Like they're huge. They are huge. And this is what you get. So you get a pack of four um, for the printer and they last for a really, really long time. I think I print a lot, a lot, a lot. So, and I think mine lasted me for six months. So like if you just print like a normal person, because I'm telling you, like I print constantly. So um, I it says on the box, like the ink could last you, I think two years or one year. I can't remember, but it's supposed to last like a really, really long time. So it is a very good printer. I like it a lot. I do have to clean the print heads a lot with it. I will say that. Um, but otherwise, I'm super happy. And sorry, I had to take a drink. <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to say really quickly is I have, in the past, I just had an Epson printer, another Epson. And it was just like, um, sort of like a cheapy printer that I picked up somewhere for maybe like $100 or maybe 120 or something like that. And I had that printer for years. And it took regular ink cartridges. I was very happy with it. But the ink cartridges can be super expensive. So um, if you're in the market for a new printer, you might want to consider that eco tank because it works so nice. And um, that's about it. So I hope you liked my little chat on paper. I hope I didn't bore you to death. And um, yeah, if you have any favorite papers that you guys like, please leave them in the comments. I would love to know because I'm always like trying to find good papers to print on. And I love to use printables. Printables just make my art like, I feel like you can't really go out and buy all these beautiful old things and put them in a journal because it becomes like too precious. So to add a few things that, you know, you really like if you make vintage style journals like I do, like to add a few vintage papers and then add in some really beautiful printables. To me, that just makes such a gorgeous journal. It really elevates the artwork and you can come up with such creative ways to, to print them and use them. And I didn't even talk about printing on like vintage papers because sometimes I like to print on book pages or I like to print on ledger papers or just different things like that. So that's a whole nother, another way that you can print your printables. So yeah, anyways, I hope you guys all have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.